Hey everybody, it's Longest 134 here. Average Joe Squad here. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Hyphen, the show where you look at comic books, movies, and everything in between. And welcome back to another episode of Fantastic Four Month. Yeah, it, uh, after um, after last after the last episode where we reviewed the Roger Corman film, we decided to finally dive into the actual three movies that were released. Yeah. So we're gonna be going. We're gonna be doing these in order. Um, we just got done watching the second one, which I hadn't seen it in. Probably a good couple years. I, I think it was the same for you. You hadn't yeah, seen it in a while. A very long while. Uh, I, I I've seen both of them in pieces. Yeah, you did, you did actually didn't own either of them. I had to loan. No, I, I had to I loan you either. the first one, and I only had one copy of the second one. And it's it it's it's the ultimate edition. So I didn't want to loan this one out. Yeah, that's, which is fair. I, I can't blame you for not. But I, I just don't know when I'll ever be able to find these again. Yeah, because I was say I don't think they've released these on anything other than DVD. No. Um, so this isn't the one I loaned to you, but I'm going to show it anyway because yeah. I'm kind of cool with this. This was something I found at the store with that other one. This is the extended edition of the first movie. What's different about it? I don't know. Haven't watched it. I bought it just because I'm like, I didn't even know there was an extended edition of this. Yeah. I guess I should be surprised this was the era where there were extended yeah, cuts and everything. But yeah, the first Fantastic Four movie, this was released all the way back in... 2005? 2005. Yeah, 2005. So year after Spider-Man 2. So I, I actually remember um, when this movie came out um, because I actually – I was pretty familiar with the Fantastic Four because um, my uncle had a lot of the FF comics, and so I had read all, I read all of them. I was familiar with the team. I knew they hang out with Spider-Man a lot. I knew they were mentioned in the PS1 game about them not home. Yeah. But – Pretty much every game I think with Spider-Man does that. Like, is even the PS4 games. Like, man, I could get help from the Fantastic Four, but they're never home. They're not. They're. Not, he doesn't mention that in the game, but the Baxter Building is in the game. Yeah, they did mention the Baxter. Building. Plus, they had a Fantastic Four uh, pack. But anyway, I like I said. I remember when this movie came out. Um, I didn't go see it in the theater because I don't. I don't think we had a whole lot of money that year. I think because I didn't. I didn't go see Spider Man Two in the theater either. So it was either we didn't have enough money to go see it at that point, or that might have been when the downtown cinema was closed, it so we didn't have, have a movie theater. But either way. I did rent this all the way back when original Netflix was a thing. They sent me the DVD in the mail. <laughs> oh, my God. And I think I watched it all of one time, and I was not impressed with it whatsoever. That's fair. But, like, that that was also the thing with superhero movies in the early 2000s with me, was that yeah. I compared all of them to the first Raimi movie. I was like, is it as good as the first Spider-Man movie? <clears throat> if it's not, I didn't either. I didn't, bu I didn't get it. Or I only rented it once. Yeah. Because that was also the same deal with the first Daredevil movie. I watched it once, didn't like it, never rented it again. Oh, get ready because we're going to be watching that at some point. Oh, I know we are. We also <laughs> got to we also got to review Halle Berry Catwoman. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna, we're going to dive into the Calf Kid shit. <laughs> to be fair, I will. When we get to Daredevil, I will no, probably I'll, go up to bat def to defend it. As someone who's rewatched the director's cut, as someone who's rewatched it, I actually will defend that as well. But anyway, um. I, what 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 are your memories of when this came out? Because this was a big deal. I remember when it. It, did it come really out. was a big deal because, like, for, oddly enough, I feel like the Fantastic Four had this weird popularity where they have stints where they're really popular and stints where they're not. No, that's as someone who has been diving into the FF comics, that's actually really accurate. So, like, when this came out, it was kind of that time where, like, what well, we're do we're doing the Fantastic Four, the like the the, the the original Super Team, the like the original Super Family, first family of Marvel, and. Especially because I think at that point, Marvel had really only done street-level characters, too. Like Daredevil, Spider-Man. I mean, and I know Blade. people... Blade. I know people will try to tell me that Spider-Man's not a street-level, but... Hulk was also out at this point. Oh, yeah, the Hulk. Ang Lee movie. Which, to be fair, I, I remember people actually kind of... Well, no, I actually... I remember people liking... I remember people liking that when I came out, but, but like, I remember I also... Yeah. That was also came out when I was in grade school. Well, critics, unfortunately, didn't like it because it, was, it wasn't enough like the old TV show, which is... Sadly, still what the standard is for Hulk, despite the fact that that shit that 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 shit's old. Well, and not only that, it, it parts of it have not aged. Parts of it don't really mesh with. Like, yeah, for one, he's not named Bruce Banner. He's named David Banner because apparently they thought the, the name Bruce was too gay. But yeah, but, but I do remember this being a big deal when it came out. But I also remember that. It was that period where I watched it and I just didn't care for it. Um, for me, I... I also remember thinking, I'm like, why is Spider-Man on this? That was my thing with all these hero movies back in the day. Was yeah. that with, you know, a little, little kid Colton, you know, he was basically like, he watched Daredevil and he's like, where the fuck is Spider-Man? 
I mean, you know, like, like wh where's Spider-Man during this? Are, is the next Spider-Man movie going to have Kingpin? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> like, I thought they were connected. Oh, man, could you imagine if they got the, the Kingpin from the Daredevil movie to do... Like I said, like I, I had the, I had that idea back then that why aren't these all connected like the MCU yeah. films are? You know, like I, I wanted them to be, and for in some regards, you almost can say they're all in the same yeah. universe. They just don't mention anything. Yeah, basically. So. Um, for me, I as someone who was fifteen when this movie came out, it oh my god, it's been fifteen years since this movie came out. Holy crap! Uh <laughs> Yeah, I know. I feel so old. Hey, I'll be 25 next week, so... Yeah, I know. Um, so... It, it's really weird seeing how... Like, because, like, when, I, when it came out, like, I was at that age where I only watched superhero movies if they were things I cared about. So which, like, Spider-Man, yeah. X-Men. Especially because when this was coming out, I think Batman Begins also came out. Yeah, I believe... So, yeah, it came out the same year. So... I, I, I know because... NASCAR connection. They had a race where it was called the Batman Begins 400, and a lot of cars had Batman themed skins going on. I might have to show you footage from that at one point. Like oh, they had the Batmobile God. there and everything. They oh, did that a lot. Like did. Junior actually had a Dark Knight Rises car with like Bane and Batman on it. It's actually a really cool car for a really bad movie. But the Indy 500 will run red with Razzy Zazzy. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to. You know that's almost coming at the end. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to do a quick review about that at some point when we. But um. But like so when this came out, like the the, the movie I cared about when it came out was Batman Begins, which I think I didn't even go see in the theater. I I watched it when it came out on TV. It's like me, like I said, I I bought Spider Man Two on DVD when it came yeah. out. That was actually the first DVD I ever bought. So when this came out, I was kind of like, eh, if it comes out on video or v or DVD, I'll rent it. Back when and, renting was still. Back when was Renning was dying at that point. Renning was dying at that point. Um, this, like I said, I I watched a lot of times when it came out on TV, but usually I would be I would miss chunks of it. Or like um, you put it out, you put it on as like something in the background. Yeah, something on the background. So this is probably like one of the first serious times I've actually sat down and watched it, and, and just kind of soaked all of it in. And I gotta say, it it's not bad. I still think the Roger Corman film is the better film of the two of them, but that's mostly because I don't like some of the the chain the choices they made in this. Yeah, um, I I agree with you to an extent. That's, I think there are better things in this. I think the read is better. I think, oh, obviously. I think, I think everybody except Sue is better in this. Yeah, the, the acting then, is like, way better. But I I like parts of Jessica Alba's performance as Sue, but it's not. It's not the total Sue package, you know what I mean? Yeah. But and I, the effects are obviously a lot better, but that's not even really fair to say because yeah, we're dealing with a movie from 94 that was unfinished versus the movie in 2005 with a was multi-million actually, yeah. dollar budget. So, but overall, I kind of like, I, I kind of like the, I like these ones a little more, but I, I, I guess the way to say it is I like these a little more as, as movies if we're going for accuracy, accuracy, the Corma one is by far yeah. better. But this one also does some good, some things I like. Well, and part of the other is, I for as much as he was over the top in the Roger Corman one, I like that Doom more than this Doom. Uh, you don't like the guy from Charmed? Which what is that guy's name? Hold on. Hi guys, I'm Victor Von Doom. I just talk in this this kind of scummy over the top voice. I forget who that guy is. Um. Keep, keep talking. I'll look for it. It's in here. So, I guess right out of the way, we might. I might as well talk. We we can talk about the cast real quick before we talk about the plot. Julian Mc McMahon? Julian McMahon, I think is that guy. He, yeah. I I I know him from Charmed more than anybody. So, so. why don't why don't we start with just talking about the cast real quick, just to get let's go from best to worst. Okay. Um. So I think the the one you and I both agree on is the probably the best is the Reed. Yeah. Um. I definitely think the Reed in this is great. I think he nails a lot of yeah. Reed's character. You know, he doesn't look as old as Reed is. You know, he doesn't have the the silver well, streaks in the fair, hair. He didn't always look that. Yeah, old. he didn't always look like that. So like this yeah, is a so good like, example of a younger Reed. I think he like I said I think he nails a lot of the character yeah. down, especially the parts you know where it's like. He'll just get going and talking about something, yeah. and everybody else is kind of like, just stop yeah, like, fucking talking. Yeah, like, like literally, they're like, would you just stop talking and let me catch up? 
it, which they they it, even in the second movie they show that which we yeah. were actually chuckling because that was there was a lot of in character moments. Um, but. I actually think he has a really I also really like the dry sense of humor he t- he brings to the character. Yeah, where like he he makes jokes, but like you can't sometimes can't tell he's joking. Cast commentary, commentary by, by. E- Ewan Gruffin, who, who's the name of uh, Jessica Alba and Michael Chiklis. That would be actually kind of fun to watch commentary. Um, uh, I might have to do that sometime. Um, I, but you know, I I really like because like. They get him really down. I also think they really understand the, the, the tragedy to him. Where, you know, for all of his intelligence, he still can't... Oh, sorry. Thought maybe I could put that up there. Yeah, don't worry. Um, he still can't get over the fact that he radically ruined these people's lives, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, Grant, I, I argue Sue and Johnny lives were not nearly as ruined as, say, Ben's was, but we'll get to that. Um... Yeah, I, I actually think he's probably the best actor in these, and if they were, even though I know they're going to get a different actor for the MCU, he really wouldn't be a bad choice for me. No, I, 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 at least I think so. I know, and I know that, I know there's a lot of people that are like, well, no, we can't reuse actors, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I mean, we brought, we brought JK back for, yeah. for, for, for well, yeah. Jonah. So like, I, I mean, there's also been that talk of the original Cyclops is, yeah. is willing to come back and do yeah. Cyclops, and I think he would still be a pretty oh, good yeah, fit. Oh yeah, he'd be perfect. Same if we could get Fong Jensen to come Wait. back as, as Gene. Honestly, I wouldn't mind that because, like, you could just make them older and be the ones leading the new team of X-Men. Yeah. Like, you can still have that, Professor Xavier. You could tie new mutants into yeah, that, and just, then, just, which I don't think they're going to do. But Yeah, it, they obviously not. That, they, would be a, that would be a good way to tie stuff together. But, but, but like, like I said, I, I think he's probably the best, well, one of the best actors in this. He... he like I said, he gets Reed really down pat. Um, the next best actor for me would actually probably be Michael Chiklis as uh as Ben Grimm slash the thing. Yeah, I think I think he really again, I think I think almost everybody in this movie really nails yeah. the characters, you know. The writing isn't the strongest at points for any for anybody, but yeah. they're still you can tell they're who they're supposed to be. I he, I definitely think he nails Ben a little better than the one that was in the Roger oh, Corman movie. Totally so. The effects are most certainly improved, but again, that's not really a fair comparison to make. Yeah. Um but, like, because, like, I, I like the way he, he acts just almost like, well, he acts like Reed's best friend, for one. And two, I just like the way he has this warmth to him that I think the other Ben didn't have. Because, like, for, for all of his, you know, he's a grump, and, like, there's this warmth to the thing that makes you really like him as a character. That, like, you know, for all the, the, the hardships that's come to him, he's still Ben Grimm underneath all of it. And he still tries to be a good person in spite of the, the hardships that come to him. Especially the... I. So, in this movie, one of the changes that I detested, because it just... Ben's married to someone in this before he meets Alicia. And the moment he becomes the thing, she is terrified of him and gets a divorce and leaves him. Holy shit. Yeah, well, that was not needed, especially because everyone no, in this that, movie that treats kind him of like feels a monster. Like, that kind of feels like a dark for sake of dark moment. Yeah, like it. It was so unnecessary, and it's pretty much the whole reason why like one of the big action set pieces happens. So like it was that was unnecessary. Um, I also didn't like the way they made it that Doom was able to convince Ben so likely to join sides with him because he so that, so that. Doom can steal his cosmic powers to power himself up because he wants him to think that Reed isn't actually working on trying to fix Ben. Um, that part I didn't really care for, but, like, as we said in the next movie, I like the fact that they kind of just glanced over that because it was really not needed for them to do that, no, in my really opinion. Wasn't. Um, your thoughts on Ben? Like I said, I think the actor definitely is a better fit for the character than the one we had during the Corman one. Because, I mean, pretty much for the, the reasons you gave, you know, he... Yeah. There's a certain warmth to the character, you know, there he jokes a lot more. Yeah. You know, but there's also still that serious side to to the character, yeah. you know. Kind of how um we we brought it up when we were watching the second movie that um Ben spends most of this movie with everybody being afraid of him. And by the time yeah. we roll around to the second movie, oh, yeah, he's, it's like it's kind of swung the, yeah. the pendulum's gone the other yeah. way. He's a little more comfortable with it, you know. He certainly if he had the choice he would not be how he is, but yeah. he's kind of just grown to accept it. Yeah, like, you know, it's just a part of him now. Um, which brings me to the next actor, uh, Chris Evans, as the Human Torch, which... 
can we just bring him back as the Human Torch and just not say anything? <laughs> just not say anything. Like, I, I think that's been my joke for a while now is that if you're going to reboot the Fantastic Four, just bring Chris Evans back right. as and Johnny just, and, don't, and don't say anything about it. Like, 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 you could honestly just even joke about it throughout all the movies. Like, people yeah. would be like, you know, you look a lot like, yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. I get that um, a lot, but I think I'm a little better looking. <laughs> like, be like just, that, that would be, be funny, really funny and also perfectly in character. Just because he hasn't, like, Chris Evans looks like he hasn't aged a day since. No, he hasn't. He still looks pretty like, damn good. The only difference is that he's, when he became Cap, they, they had to bulk him up. But, um, I do love Johnny in this movie because he also, again, he's. A narcissist. He clearly thinks really highly of himself. By the end of the day, when the others need him, he can be there. Um, I do think he's better in the second film because, like in the first film, he's just an no. I, I actually, I will, I will completely agree with you on that. And I like Johnny Storm, but he is he comes off as a complete dickhead during this entire movie. Yeah, like which I think was the intent. But, but I think they play that up. That that they play that facet of the character up just a little, a little too, too much. much. Yeah, because like he. Have you ever heard of the movie John Tucker Must Die? Yes. He he really feels like the John Tucker character no, he I, had to I, do in that movie. I, and I'm I, like, I can agree. I haven't seen that movie in a while. We might have to review that sometime as an April Fool's or something. John Tucker Must like, Die. Like, can you even buy that movie? <laughs> I'm sure you can. Um, But, like... Because, like, in this movie, like, he spends most of it tormenting Ben, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, he, he does play pranks on the thing. Him and the thing have, like, a prank war that goes on between the two of them. But, like... Where are your ears? Yeah, like, he, he's <laughs> just... Like, he's rude in a way that, like, just... Comes off as kind of the one, The one with the, the cream in the hand. The oh, cream yeah. in the hand. Johnny! Which is, like, come on, man. It's... Like, God, we're, we're, what's next? The banana peel trick? Yeah. We're gonna do that? But, uh... But, like, granted, like... I do think they have the beats right for him. You know, he, he constantly flirts with women... He sees the human torches a way for him to make money and also to have fun. Sponsorships. Sponsorships, yeah. Uh, we'll get to that, though. Um, but just overall, I think he he's a good fit for the character. I just think the writing can be... And to be fair, I, I actually think all the actors are really good. It's just... For three in particular... Well, okay. Two of the actors we're going to talk about next are better. Are, are good actors. It's just the writing's not very strong for them. Yeah. But, like... For, and I think for Johnny, he definitely suffers a lot from the, the the writing kind of not giving kind of him just a, failing him. Yeah, like he, they they take too much of his re, his the renegade the renegade hothead over the fact that he is a decent person at the end of the day. Yeah. Um. Your your thoughts on Johnny? Uh, like I said, I when I first started watching the MCU films, like that this was like my thing. I was like. I was like, so wait a minute, he, he was a human torch, and now, now, he's, now he's Cap? Okay, I can get used to this, but still, I, for a while, it took me a long time to look at Chris Evans as Captain America rather than looking at him as Johnny Storm, because that was kind of what I was familiar with. It's kind of like how, you, like, you know, you, you start to associate actors with certain roles, you know, like, mm. let's be honest, anytime we watch, like, we were at uh, work the one day and someone had an old episode of Walker, Texas Ranger, oh, yeah, and Toby and McGuire, McGuire shows up, I'm like, oh, so this is what Ben Riley was doing. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was thinking, like you, you see you see actors and you just instantly think like of these the, roles, roles, you know. Yeah. Um, overall, I I I would argue I like him just as much as Johnny as I do Cap. Like I think he does great with both with both roles. You know, he I really do, I do think so. I think he I think he enjoyed playing both. I think, I think so. I just don't think he talks about these ones anymore because nobody nobody really does. Yeah. But overall, I mean, he does a great job with bringing Johnny to life in this. Yeah. I really feel like, like I said, I feel like he embodied the character very, very well. I think the writing could have just been a little, little better, bit better, yeah. And it could have been he would have, but he still knocks it out of the park. Exactly. Uh, which brings us to probably the worst of the four, uh, Sue Storm, played by Jessica Alba. Do you, uh, do you want to get your thoughts out of the way? Because I think this will be the the <laughs> the worst one for you. I'm I'm sorry I didn't wear my uh, Susan Storm Stan shirt. I guess. <laughs> but, um, I just I know she's one of your favorites. Yeah. So um, I I love Susan Storm to death. She's honestly one of my favorite Marvel characters. Period. And like while I don't think Jessica Alba's performance in the movie is terrible, it's also not very good. Yeah. But I I I, I kind of have the same issue with with Susan in this movie that I have with with Johnny, and that. And we reference this. It feels like the writers didn't know what to do with her. No, I, which sucks because she honestly is the most powerful member of the FF. She really is. 
And but it just feels like overall, like they just didn't know what to do with her, and it kind of leads to in both of these films, it leads to her kind of being the butt of the joke a lot of the time, yeah, which or is just rather insulting, or just a straight up bitch for a lot of the film, where like she just. Like, like, it's for the... Which, the, which, granted, you know, Sue, Sue isn't... Sue's a firecracker to begin with. But yeah, but, like... She's not like Emma Emma Frost. Yeah, like, because, like, like, she is still kind of the mother figure of the group. Like, it's, there's no... None of that warmth I kind of associate with Sue. Yeah. Like, it's like... Yeah, she is a firecracker, but you can tell it's it comes from just wanting to protect her family so yeah. bad. I, I, would, I would actually argue that I think neither of the four Fantastic Four movies get her character right whatsoever. No, I, I think that there, is... there are ones that get parts of it correct. Like, this one has parts of it. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, and it's... And a little more with the second one. Yeah. But I don't think there's been a Fantastic Four movie that's really nailed who Susan is as a character. No, I, I would which say is a, not. As, as a Susan Storm fan, is pretty disappointing. Yeah. But I... That's why I kind of... I'm going to the to the MCU Fantastic Four movie just being like, can you fucking please just get this right this damn time? No, I... Like, I'm begging you. Just um, please... Like, cause for me, like, when I went into this, I was afraid she, it was kind of gonna be like Christmas Jones from The World Is Not Enough Dark, where like, she's supposed to be this really, like, for those of you who don't, haven't seen The World, or The World Is Not Enough, or haven't seen it in a while, Christmas Jones, one of the Bond girls, is played by Denise Richards. She's supposed Richards. to be, she's supposed to be a geologist. Like, she's supposed to be like this scientist working for an oil company. And you never believe it once when you watch that film. You, you know what I mean, right? Like, she's yeah. supposed to be, like, the super intelligent, sassy woman that, you know... It, I'll, I'll admit, I think Jessica comes off as being, like, the, the, the second in charge of, like, the company she works at. My problems more with the Sue character is more... A, she's the butt of the joke, like, she has to constantly strip out of her clothes. She constantly loses her clothes. She constantly turns invisible and forgets to turn her clothes back on. Yeah. It, 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 but, like, that's... It, it, it just... The joke's funny once, and even yeah. then it's not very funny, but then they just keep bringing it back. Right. I'm like, guys, it wasn't fucking funny the first time. No. Um, the other problem I have with it is she spends most of this movie and the second film constantly complaining about wanting to have a normal life. And while I don't mind her wanting that, she complains about it to the point where I, I just get tired of it. No, and it, that's, again, that's why I said the writing really fails, Sue. Because, like, at the, in the comics, Sue wants a normal life. Like, but... Yeah. She doesn't whine about it all the that's damn not, time. Yeah, like, you know, she, she's like, you know, I want a normal life, but that's not what I... That's not possible, you know? Yeah. So, like, it, it, again, the writing for Sue is not very good in either yeah. of these movies. And, I mean... I think by the time the second movie rolls around, it's a little better, but it's, it's a still... a little better, yeah. The writers just did not know what the hell to do with her at no, all, which, like, is, fo- which sucks. Yeah, I focusing mean, but... on this movie, my problem is also that she spends most of it pining for Reed. And I'm like, girl, he he dents. Yeah, you're which gonna I mean, have to You're going to have to hit him over the head There was a lot of that in the comics, but it... Yeah, it, it, it wasn't like 24-7 she was, she was like, I want, I want that. Yeah, like, like, like no, that wasn't how it was. No, because like, and not only that, like part of the reason why that kind of thing works in a comic book is because it's only once a month. Yeah. So you have to remind your audience, hey, this is what she wants. When, I, when I'm sitting here for two hours and I'm getting reminded of it every fifteen, yeah, like, it's like, come on, man, please. No, that scene where she turns invisible for the first time and she's like, "Read, look at me." I can't. <laughs> you can't, or you won't. No, I mean, real. Look, look, look at like, your hands. hands. <laughs> yep. Which I, I, I love that scene. It's it funny is a good hell. scene, but like... I think we I, think I referenced that to you one time. When I, when I watched that movie, at, at that point, I was so f- just done with her. Like, constantly nagging at him. And I'm like, girl, you're not even with him right now. But no, that, that, like... I, I do think she's a little bit better in two. But here she's... The worst. <laughs> well, I should say the second worst... The worst in this is Doom. Like, which, it's sad when we think the Corman Doom is better. Like, what was what was uh, I telling you watching the second one? Can we just dub Corman's Doom yeah, over, no, over I, top of this? Oh! <laughs> like, if you had problems with it, my problem, like, as someone who, who has grown to appreciate Doctor Doom in the comics, 
like this guy, like they, like I, I'm assuming what happened was someone saw the Corman film because they own it, of course. And Fox was like, "You can't have him doing this shit." So like they, they basically told him, "All right, you're just a businessman. You're not, you're not going to be over the top like say the Green Goblin. You're just a villain." Yeah, you, you, see, you see what the foe did? Don't do that. Yeah, like, which, which but, like, like, I, I could have used though. some. Yeah, like, I could have used some of that with Doom, though, because, like, he's just so. Doom toots as he pleases. Yeah, like, he. Like, just, just. Like, Doom can be just, fucking a goofball. Yeah. He's like Venom. He can be a goofball. And, like, to be fair, like, with Doom, he doesn't even know he's being a goofball. It's just That's how, how he, he is. is. But here, he's just. Hi, Sue. It's time for us to have a little, uh. Relationship discussion. See, it's like the costume doesn't look bad. Well, the costume actually looks pretty good. It looks. I would argue it looks just as good as the the corner one, but it's just he he doesn't match the the his, no his acting does not ma- match. Julian's performance just does not. I mean, he's and I can't again. I can't tell how much of that was him or how much, much of it was just the writing. Right. He's just yeah, like he he just he, like for someone named Victor Von Doom, he's not very. Doomy. Doomy. Um, the other problems I have with Doom is just how they wrote him. Like, he's not a king of Latveria. They, they kind of just play him off as being, like, a scientist that owns a corporation. He's evil Doc Brown. Yeah, he's evil Doc Brown, basically. Like, he's he's not very... Like, they... Then, when he does become Doom, he gets powers from the radiation that the same as the others, basically. Only, for some reason, he's slowly turning into metal. Because he the radiation fused him with the, the anti-radiation doors. And also, he has lightning powers. Don't, don't question it. Yeah. Like, I, I, the, bottom line, I, they, they they wanted to do Doom, but they didn't want to do Doom. Is kind of the, the my, my feelings on the thought process on that. Yeah, so, let's, uh... Let's just kind of sum up the movie a little bit. I don't think we really need to go into the origin. No. Because we already covered the origin pretty well in the last one, plus our uh, video about uh, how would we like to see the MCU reboot done, which should be up by the time uh, yeah. by the time this goes up. That should already be up. Check that one out. Yep. So um, let's just kind of dive into the main, the, ma- the, main, the main challenge of the whole plot. You know, we get to the yep. part, you know, we, we're introduced to the characters. They, they go through the origin. They get the powers. You know, where does the movie go from there? Um, mostly the the Fantastic Four faff about in the Baxter building while Reed tries to figure out how they get rid of their powers. Uh, they cause most of the problems in the film instead of instead of trying to save them. Oh, so they're basically they're going Avengers on it. Yeah, and, and and then uh, and then they actually fight any actual bad guy, and then the movie ends. Yeah, that's that's pretty much a good summary, and I know. Like, like most of our reviews, we dive pretty heavily into the plot, but I mean, this, and this is, this, I feel like this will also be a complaint you share with me on this one, is that nothing really happens in his No, nothing really all. does. I remember reading this and being like, nothing happens about, you know, like, say what you will about any of the other three Raimi movies. Yeah. Stuff they happens. They keep being engaged the yeah, whole time. Like, like, this, I remember watching this, and I'm like, like I told you, I shut it off halfway through. I was less inter- I was less held attention wise by this movie as a kid, yeah. than I was by Daredevil, like, which should say something. In my opinion, this has the same problem as I have with the twenty seventeen Power Rangers film. It's so focused on telling an origin story that it doesn't give you anything beyond the origin yeah. story. Like, because for reference, the the twenty seventeen Power Rangers movie is like two and a half hours long. Fifteen minutes of it is dedicated to them in Ranger costumes and Zords. Three minutes is it of them in suits. Like twelve minutes of Zord fight. Do you want to review that movie? <laughs> I no no I, answer I is no. no. But I I probably should. But I like I I I don't want to talk about that movie because I don't want you flipping out on camera. Well, well then I'm in the minority because a lot of the Power Rangers fans love that movie, and part of my problem with that movie is. You know that that's for a different that's for a different different video. But anyway, video. like I said, not it's just nothing really happens in it. And I mean, I I'm sure there will be some people out there that will say, "Well, it's the origin story movie. Nothing's really supposed to happen in the origin movie." But at the same time, you know, we first X Men movie, 
stuff happens. First Raimi film, stuff happens. Hell, Batman Begins. Shit happens. Yeah, like, and Batman Begins spends the first half of that film... Yeah. ...telling Batman's origin, developing his crime-fighting yeah. style. whereas this movie, it, it just devotes so much time to the origin story, but by the time we, we get to the point where they have their powers, they realize yeah. they gotta be a team. The movie's half over at that point. Yeah, it's like, basically. And even then, like it takes at like, least with at least with the Raimi film. I know we keep going back to Raimi, but yeah. I, that's that's the pedestal I hold everything to from this era. Yeah, that's fair. Peter's got the the, the damn powers about thirty minutes into yeah. the movie. He's ready. He's going. Yeah, there you go. and like we've done the origin. I mean, Ben's dead. He's got the powers. Yeah. He's got the costume. There you go. We're 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 moving. I mean, it takes him probably about an hour to get to like his first suited up mo- moment. Like when he's when he first fights the goblin, yeah. But at the same time, you got a lot of action before that. You had him at the wrestling match. The human spider. You had him fight the burglar. Like there was stuff that there got was us. The, to there that. was the yeah. clips of him with the pictures and stuff. The like of the stuff happens. Whereas this, it's like they pumped all the budget, yeah, into the origin, and then they just they just didn't really know where to what to do with it. You know, it was kind of like yeah. the whole, okay, we got everything set up. No what? Guys, where do we go from here? Yeah, and everybody what? at the board meeting just shit the bed and didn't know what um, they were going to do. What if they, they fight Doom? Okay, but how do they fight Doom? Okay, so, I don't know. So first we have a montage of them getting used to living in the Baxter building together. Um, and we got to throw have, in some more scenes of Johnny hitting on Chick. Ch- we got we to gotta have yeah, lots we have of more that. scenes of Johnny being a dickhead. <laughs> then we kind of walk... Okay, so one of my other problems... Is it doesn't know whether to be the, their power should be comedic or serious or serious. Whereas you know the twenty fifteen film, it's all serious, all dark. Which I whereas I, this movie yeah. kind of tries to skirt the line between both. Well, it does the same thing I had a problem with the Corman film, where like Ben, like at the at the end of the day, Ben Ben's transformation should be horrifying, but they still want to play it as they want to play it as a joke. Like Ben is literally sitting on a bridge contemplating what he should do. Then he tries to talk down a guy trying to kill himself, and then he causes a, like a ten car pileup on the bridge. Like that was what I meant. Like like, like they cause that that bridge. Cr- yeah, like which nah, they do, which is awful. <laughs> I mean, granted, it's more Ben than the, all four of them, but like they're heroes after this. I'm like, but Ben caused most of that. <laughs> like, I get that the other three kind of help make it not bad, but well, okay. Reed and Johnny did. Sue just mucked around in her... Cl- like, like, that's what I remember. Like, Sue spends most of that naked and invisible. I don't want to talk about it. But, like... You know how pissed it makes me. And, like, that... Because, like, that, that brings up a lot of my... Like, because, like, most of Ben's scenes are actually, like, him dealing with the fact that he's now a rock monster. Like, like his wife <laughs> leaves him, which... Again, was just horrible. It was horrible and probably not necessary. Pro- Actually, I know it wasn't necessary. Yeah, like, why just just, just have him dating Alicia? You don't have to have this wife thing to make him more have more pathos. Yeah. But then, like, you've got stuff like he's trying, like, you know, you got that, the, the scene in the bar where he runs into Felicia, or Felicia, Alicia, sorry. I, I, Black cat's in this. What? <laughs> Alicia, sorry. Um, Alicia Silverstone. No, Alicia Masters. <laughs> um... You have that, but then you have scenes where he's trying to eat breakfast, and he ends up biting the fork, the fork prongs off the fork. I'm like, you can't have it both ways. You either have him, like, actually having pathos to the fact that he can barely hold a, an eating utensil now, or, or, or it's all funny. It's either all funny or it's not. Yeah, and they, they just can't really pick. Like, I, I can forgive them go, do, kind of doing funny stuff with Sue and johnny because their powers are just because there's they, they there has been stuff that's funny done with sue especially yeah. in the early comics and you know, there's there's one where they're, they're tossing all of them are tossing her around the lab as yeah. a joke it's like there is stuff like that but it's like they it's like the, the writers looked at certain things we're like well that's what they want you know they want humor with the powers but they also want some serious yeah it's like, it's like no they they couldn't pick what they wanted like for me if you're gonna do a movie like because, like, like I, I could forgive them maybe doing jokes where Johnny accidentally burns his clothes off a lot. Yeah. Because he just doesn't have control of it. But then you do stuff like, oh, Johnny, if you go, you can actually make your, your body burn as hot as a supernova. That could end up destroying the world as we know it. 
Okay. So Johnny has to be careful. Except that he's not. And then we have Sue and Reed who spend no time developing their powers. And like, like, cause like, I, like, if I were Sue, I'd be like, what, what if I accidentally, my powers get so strong, I end up literally like fading out of existence. You know, and then, and then like Reed even is like, well, what if this is a disease we've got? Like, what if it's a virus that's contagious? Which is, is a fair thing to worry about when you go into space because that's, like astronauts spend like, what, three days in quarantine before they are allowed to. It's like three days, yeah. But like, but it, but then like you do you do jokey scenes like Reed sitting on the toilet taking a shit, runs out of toilet paper so he stretches his arm to where there's spare paper. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I still laugh at that one because you and I have made jokes about that. No, I, I've that. made jokes about that. <laughs> it's just I mean, hell, we we made jokes about Reed and Sue's sex life with the fact that he can stretch every part of his body. <laughs> I'm every watch, part of his body. I'm watching. Ignore me. Watch the movie, <laughs> watch the <laughs> show. Oh, oh I, I am. am. <laughs> That's one of the best comics. No, because that's that's accurate. But I think that's really just all we. I think that's really the the most we can say about the movie. It's just nothing really happens. happens. We, it's the origin story, but nothing really happens. Well, then it's disjointed. Like I like I was trying to like it's like they try to do serious pathos stuff, but at the same time they want to be like, oh, it's a silly action blockbuster comedy, yeah. you know. And while while Raimi had some of that, you know, we had the yeah. comedy stuff. Like there was a balance to yeah. it. That made it not feel, like, so disjointed. But I feel like with this, they were trying to go for that, but they, they really felt flat on the face. Yeah, I... Because, I, like I said, I, I... Like, you know, like, I love this the scene where Johnny tries to snowboard and his powers activate for the first time. And he ends up melting, like, creating, like, a hot, like a, like a hot spring. And he tries to get the girl to get into the hot tub with him. And I'm like... I actually almost waited for her to start taking her clothes off. I'm like, God damn, Johnny. Uh, that would have actually been Ooh. funny, where, like, literally she's like, yeah. <laughs> but, um, the other thing is, I feel like, the, like, large swaths of this movie happen off screen, and, like, they just cut it out. Yeah. And what like, the editing is really... Which is why I almost wonder how, how this fares up, because, um, for those of you that don't know, this is the extended edition. Yeah. Um, including 20 minutes of footage that is added, so, like, does that fix some of this? It probably doesn't, but probably it, not everything. I'm interested. But... I would be interested to see what this adds. But like, cause like, like there were there were mo- l- large portions of this film where like it felt like things happened really fast. Which we even said that with the second movie, yeah, where we, the, we get, the the end battle, especially. We get into the second one. I, I like I I was kind of it, it. It felt really fast. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like cause like 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 they like like they, like you said we had like this slow burn, but then like. You know, but, like, because, like, we have, like, the movie opens with Reed and Ben getting, trying to get a loan from Doom to further his experiments. But, like, th- that's where it starts. And I'm like, we're just thrown in? Okay. But sometimes that will work in terms of writing. Like, sometimes but then other work, times like, it just doesn't. Yeah, like, it, well, it didn't really, like, it kind of just felt like I was thrown into the middle of a film. Instead of, this is the beginning. If that makes any sense to you. No, that makes perfect sense. Um... But like, yeah, I think that's kind of my my overall thoughts. Um, I don't really have much other to offer because um, like I said, I I think I I think I really summed up my feelings on it earlier. Was just that it, it it's an origin story with no no real meat to yeah. it other than the origin story. You know, like I mean, I like the movie. Don't get me wrong. I would still I this is a movie. You know, like, it's not a movie that I would banish to the to the shelf. Like oh yeah, like a certain X Men movie that will not be named. Yeah. But, um, I, this certainly is edited better than that film. No, I'll it is. It but it, it it it's also not a movie that you know. If I wake up and I'm gonna be like, you know what, I'm gonna watch this because that's what I want to watch. There's yeah, like eon I, other movies I would rather throw on and willingly watch. Yeah, like. But it, at the end of the day, like I, I argue that this movie isn't bad. It's not very good, but it's it's enjoyable. You know, if if you like if yeah. you like the Fantastic Four, you'll get some enjoyment out of it. You know, um. I, I think my, my feelings are with you. Like, it's not... I enjoy it more uh, than Iron Man 2. Well, that's not very hard. <laughs> I, I I think it's not a great film. I think it's a passable film. Um, I, I just think it it misses the mark here and there. But at, as a whole, I think there is some good stuff in there. It's just, you have to kind of 
slog through it together. And it's also one of those movies, like, it it has a dip in the middle. Yeah. Like, I know people, like, like you know, like, music, that's the thing. But, like, I, I know movies where it, it, it really does feel like... It drops off a cliff a little bit. Yeah, like, where it just goes nowhere for a while and then ramps back up. And this is definitely one of those movies because, like, I remember, I, I'll admit, partway through during the, the I, I kind of zoned out when I was watching this. Like, I think I, I, I fiddled with my phone. I checked my Facebook. I was like, oh, this is I. We're we're not doing nothing right now. Yeah, we're not doing nothing right now. Like, which is weird because, like, literally that part of the movie is rebuilding a machine to try and remove their powers. And I didn't feel as invested as I did the rest of it. No, nah, that's fair. I actually, I, I feel the same way with that movie, honestly. Um, I also didn't really care for the love triangle between Reed, Doom, and Sue. No, I, it, I, I give, I give just as little shit about that as I do with this, this, the love triangle they keep trying to make with, with, with Reed, Sue, and Namor. I just, I'm tired uh, yeah, of that shit. Yeah. Enough. Like, Enough with the damn love triangle. Especially because, like, in my opinion, at the, at this point, like, Doom doesn't, like, like, he'll try to get with Sue if it's possible. Like, It's not his wars. overall goal. Yeah, like, his overall goal is proving... Proving that he's better than Reed. Yeah. And also taking over the world. Like, then, like, the stuff with Namor gets kind of old. Especially now that Namor's no longer a villain. He, it just gets, like... Remember the, the, what was it, the Invaders, for God's sake. Remember the Invaders, the Illuminati. Um, I think he's technically an Avenger. But then again, everybody's technically an Avenger in the Marvel Universe. It's like how, like... Saying someone's a member of the Justice it's like, League. It's like being a member of an Oprah audience. Or the member of the Justice League. Yeah. But, so, overall, what are your, what are your final thoughts, you know, on um, just the movie overall? Do, do, would you recommend it? Do, do, would you... Yeah, would, I, you I, would you care to watch it again? You know, like, like what, what are your final thoughts? I, I would recommend this, but I, I would argue... If you don't really care about the origin, I would honestly just skip to the second one. Just because I think the the second one's... Well, I think it's worse than this one. At least is more entertaining. It, it jumps straight in. Yeah, it jumps straight in. Like he's like, it, it, in my opinion, I don't think it's that hard to to get the Fantastic Four. Um, it, but like, you won't be disappointed if you watch this. You just kind of have to prepare for your the fact that it's, it kind of, you know, starts really good and then it dips and then gets better. Because I will admit, I thought the last fight scene was actually pretty, pretty well. No, done. I, um, I actually agree with that too. I, I like, I like the fight scenes in both movies. Honestly, I think yeah. the choreography is not good. The special effects are good. Um, it has probably two of the best Stan Lee cameos in the whole of the franchise. With, uh, although I wish they would have left him as Willie, the the male guy, like he was, because like, that was a real character, right? In the the Fantastic Four, right? They had a male guy I, like I, named I, Willie, I, right? I believe so. Like I actually really would have liked because like in the second one he's just Stan Lee but like I would have really preferred him just I should be, be on that list I should be on that list but like I loved him as Willie like I especially because I, I I think the Fantastic Four is one of the one of the more cherished projects he worked on especially just so much how much care he puts into the certain characters yeah like um aside from like the X Men and Spider Man in my opinion I, I think you could we could agree with that, that yeah like, I, I think I those definitely... are the ones that are like his. I, I can certainly agree to that. But. Um, but yeah, bottom line, I either would watch this with the second film as like a back to back thing, double feature, double feature, or if not, just pop in Incredibles and then watch Rise of the Silver Surfer. <laughs> but um, I would I, if I were to give this movie a rating, I'd probably give it a seven out of ten. I I think it's at least decent. Uh, that, that's probably about right where I would put it. Uh, I might I might give it an eight out of ten, but probably you know, like. Seven out of ten usually would be where where I'm at, just because for the issues I mentioned, you know that yeah. it just it doesn't really go anywhere. No, that's that's exactly it. Um, if you could, f- if you were to d- like do this movie, and what would what would you probably change in it? I would probably recast Sue right off the bat. Um, I'd probably recast Doom. Recast Doom and Sue. Give a little more build up at the beginning, just to kind of get us introduced to the characters a little more. I I would remove a lot of the, I would I would there would be less comedy in it, like. Yeah. You you could still have Johnny being being himself, you know, yeah. but like cut some of the stuff of that out, cut out the repetitive Sue jokes, like because again that yeah. like I said that just gets old. Um, but because other than that, um, all I would really say would be this the 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 final half of the movie cut like recut that all together, like come no, up I, with something that's a little better. Um, because for me, I would probably I would probably cut out the whole montage thing, you know, just just. 
you know, go to the part where they're eating breakfast together. You know, like, talk about how they're going to have to get used to it. Maybe show the scene where, where Johnny sprays the, like, just as, like, a kind of, like, little tongue-in-cheek, like, you know, we got to learn to live together. Got it. And then just instantly the part where he smacks himself in the face instead of watching him, like, constantly try to get thing the thing to put the whipped cream in his face. Yeah. Because that, that, oh, my God, I, I hated that montage. <laughs> I'm sorry. That montage was just... Unnecessary. Unnecessary. And again, like, I didn't need to think about Reed taking a shit. <laughs> um... Like, it's such a dumb... Like, you, you... People that have never watched this movie, they're probably gonna think we're making that up. And no, no that's a real fucking thing. Like, it's Reed taking a dump. also show him shaving where he uses his stretchy powers to pull his skin. And, and I'm like, I don't care how the fuck he shaves. You don't this, care this how the fuck he shaves. Well, this isn't... And you s- certainly don't care how he takes a dump. Well, this isn't like Superman where it's like, how does he shave? Because, like, a regular razor would break on his then, stubble. Does anybody really give a shit? Yeah, who gives a shit? Like, I, well, I, actually, I actually care. No, I... It humanized... Like, shut the fuck up. No. No, I... None of that. None of that. Well, because... Not like, necessary. I mean, granted, I, it's at least interesting when they show how he does it, like... It's interesting the first time I see it. No, like, after, like, the seven second times, time, like, it, it, show cool. how to shave. Because, like, Batman the Animated Series show how he did it, which was just... He re- redirected his heat vision from the mirror to, like, his stubble. Which I'm like, okay. I don't really think that would work because his hair is supposed to be, like, like steel wire, but... Yo, I was super antique as shit. <laughs> I don't, don't actually answer that. <laughs> oh, God, is this going to be like when we watch Harley Quinn and we ask how Aquaman could take a shit? That's going to be an episode just how does superheroes take a shit? shit. Uh, you ever, James Rolfe approves this video. Have you seen that, that Family Guy that Family Guy one where Superman's flying and he sees Wonder Woman? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know. He's actually using the bathroom. I know. But so anyway, I, I think we've pretty much summed up this movie. So that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you for tuning in. As always, like, subscribe, recommend to your friends. And as always, remember we ask you. Ah. Fuck, we fucked that one up. Let's do that again. Okay. As always... We, we ask you, you remember, remember the, the hyphen, hyphen and, take and take care. care. I just wonder how we talked about taking a shit. <laughs>